Okay, we're going to start in just a minute. I'm just going to let attendees are rolling in. So I'm just going to give it a minute to let the rest of participants enter. Okay. All right, we're going to get started. Um, first, just want to welcome everybody and want to thank our presenter, Megan. This is the Stevens Institute of Technology session that we have entered, that we've started. Um, thank you everyone for being here. Just a few minor housekeeping items. Um, your, your camera and your volume, uh, your speakers are turned off, so the presenter cannot see or hear you, but you are able to ask questions using the Q&A button. So if you just hold your cursor down near the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see the box pop up. You can input your questions there and Megan will answer them when she can or at the end of the session. Uh, this is one of many different presentations, as you know, so they want us to remind you that sign up for more sessions at njacac.org slash virtual fair. Um, at the end of the session, I'll do a, just a real quick closing. Um, and in the meantime, everyone have fun. I'm going to hand it over to Megan. And thank you, Megan. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you all can see. Okay, so as was mentioned, my name is Megan Murphy and I am the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Stevens Institute of Technology located in Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm going to cover a lot with you all tonight and I appreciate you taking the time to join me. I know many of the students out there are logging in a lot of screen time nowadays, so I really do appreciate you taking the time to join me and learn a little bit more about our school to see if it might be a good fit for you. As was mentioned, you can certainly put questions into the Q&A box so I can see that. Um, and I'll likely check that um, at a couple points throughout, but then also at the end. And I'll also be able to follow up after the session um, with any questions you submitted that I wasn't able to get to. I always like to start with a little bit of history of the institution. Stevens was founded in 1870 by the Stevens family. So last year we actually celebrated our 150th anniversary. Um, the Stevens family were a family of inventors. They were really driving our country forward at the time, particularly in the automotive industry. The Stevens family actually lived on the place where our campus is located today. And when Mr. Stevens passed away, he made as a part of his will the establishment of a university. The first degree we ever awarded, awarded was a mechanical engineering degree, and he wanted students to have the engineering degree, but also a liberal arts experience, which is still very much a part of who we are today as an institution. We've grown a lot since 1870. We now have over 30 different areas of study that students can choose from, primarily in the STEM fields. So things like engineering, math, science, computer science, cybersecurity, business programs, as well as humanities and arts programs. And we have just over 3,600 undergraduate students. We are actively growing though as an institution. We want to be to about 4,000 students, which is bigger than we are today, but still on the smaller side. So think about about 1,000 new students coming into Stevens each year. The average class size itself is 25 students with an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So if you're looking for a school with a smaller, close-knit community where you'll really get to know your faculty members and peers, Stevens might be a good fit for you. I mentioned we have over 30 different areas of study at Stevens, and it is important for you to familiarize yourself with these academic opportunities because our at our institution, if you do decide to apply, you have to indicate a first and second choice program on your application. A couple things about that. We do have undecided options, so you can be business undecided or humanities and arts undecided, sciences undecided, engineering undecided, right? So you might know generally what field you want to go into, but not more specifically, and that's okay. Also, you do have two years to officially declare your area of study. So you can come to Stevens thinking you want to study one thing, take some courses in that particular major, decide it's not the right fit for you, and switch to another area of study. Once you get to Stevens, the university is also quite open to you. If you're taking engineering classes as an engineering major, it's not as if you're restricted solely to that area of study. You can take more humanities classes or more business classes or more computer science classes, depending upon your interests. Students have the ability to double major, to major and minor. We also have accelerated bachelor's, master's degree programs at Stevens. So you can complete both those degrees in five years as opposed to the typical six. So again, as an applicant, what's your first choice, what's your second choice, but as a Stevens student, much more opportunity from an academic standpoint to explore. 
I'm not going to go into detail about every single major that we offer at Stevens. I'll highlight a few along the way. Um, certainly ask questions if you have them. But also remember that every school posts to their website something called an academic catalog. So you can really see the breakdown of each particular major, what courses make them up, and the descriptions of those classes to try to get a sense of what might be the best fit for you and your interests. About 600 of our students at Stevens are studying within our business school. I do want to highlight two programs here. First is our business and technology program. This is our most popular major within the School of Business. Business and technology allows students to combine an area of business with an area of tech. So they're essentially choosing something within the School of Business and something outside of the School of Business to make their major. So perhaps they're choosing economics and computer science or management and music and tech. You're creating that combination based on your interests. The other program I want to highlight is quantitative finance, or QF as we call it for short. Not many schools offer QF at the undergraduate level, so it is a unique opportunity at Stevens. Most schools have it at the graduate level. QF is really good for a student who has three main interests, finance, mathematics, and computer science. So if you find that your interests fall into these three categories, QF might be a good option for you. Our students in their freshman year in this program are certified in the use of the Bloomberg Terminal, which is an important tool that is used on Wall Street, so definitely sets them ahead for those internship opportunities. I mentioned we have the Humanities and Arts at Stevens, our College of Arts and Letters. You can choose to major in any of the areas of study you see here. Our most popular are Music and Technology and Visual Arts and Technology. These two programs do allow students to submit portfolios as a part of their application process. So you have the option to do that and they could be reviewed by a faculty member. The Music and Technology program is really studying music history, music theory, getting that foundation in the field, and then looking at what it now looks like from a tech perspective, sound recording, audio recording, audio engineering. Visual Arts and Technology, same idea. You're going to get those drawing and painting courses that you would get in a traditional um, visual arts experience, but then adding the tech side to it. So looking more at animation, digital media, media arts, right? Where, has the, where have these two disciplines been and where are they now going in the world of tech? Sciences really form the foundation of all of our programs at Stevens. All students will take math and science courses as a student, but of course some choose to major in them as well. These are quite popular areas of study for those students who ultimately decide to go on to medical school. For example, 40% of our students who study biology, chemical biology, chemistry, do go on to medical school from Stevens. So that is a popular route. Research is also popular within these programs. Whereas all Stevens students will take courses within these majors, fewer students actually do major in them. So the departments are smaller, students are able to develop those relationships with faculty members and work on research. Either the faculty member led research that they pursue or students also have the opportunity to pursue their own undergraduate research projects. Similar to how I mentioned that the sciences all students take, same thing with the humanities. Students will have humanities electives as well as writing courses, that liberal arts piece that I mentioned at the start of the, out of, of the session. No matter what it is that you go on to do, reading, writing, developing an argument, defending that argument, these are important skills to have. We wanna make sure our students have that foundation at Stevens. If you add up all the engineering students at Stevens, that's the largest group. However, the single most popular area of study at our institution is computer science. And several years ago, we broke it out into computer science and cybersecurity. So you can choose to major in one or the other. Stevens is always really looking outward to industry, to professional life, to see how we can best prepare our students. So computer science, that area is growing in interest, and then especially cybersecurity as well, with the growing need for more coursework and more individuals to work in that field. So Stevens recognized recognize that and created this separate program. Computer science, of course, still is though quite broad, um, and the program is set up such that in your junior and senior year, you really get to choose elective coursework that allows you to specialize within areas of the field. So perhaps you select information systems, data structures, game design and development. Again, you have those last few years to really hone your skills in the area that is of most interest to you within that broader field. Recognizing the growing interest in these fields, the importance in these fields. Um, Stevens, last year when we opened up our brand new academic center, the Gateway Academic Center in fall of 2019, it is home to our computer science, cybersecurity, and artificial intelligence programs. So while it's open to all students, this is where many of the classes take place for these areas of study, all the faculty offices and lab space as well. Stevens, as I mentioned, started off as an engineering school. Um, we still have many, many students studying engineering at Stevens. It's perhaps what we are most well known for. And a couple things I want to highlight about our engineering program. 
First, at Stevens, if you are awarded an engineering degree, it is a Bachelor of Engineering degree, or a BE, as you see there. At other institutions you may be looking at, at engineering programs, you'll be awarded a Bachelor of Science degree. But at Stevens, it's the Bachelor of Engineering. And this is for two main reasons. The first reason is, at Stevens, regardless of the area of interest that you ultimately end up pursuing, so biomedical, electrical, software, naval, whatever it may be, all engineering students take the same courses their first three semesters at Stevens. So you're all getting that same common core foundation in the field before moving on and specializing in your chosen area of study. This is obviously a really good option for someone who's undecided within engineering because our curriculum is naturally structured such that you'll get to explore the various areas that we offer. But even for someone who's more decided within the field, say you know for sure you wanna be an environmental engineer, it's still useful to have the Bachelor of Engineering degree because you're typically not only working with one type of student, one type of engineer. So having a more broader understanding of the field is not only gonna benefit you in college, but certainly out in the workforce, your professional career and beyond. The second aspect that allows us to award the Bachelor of Engineering is what we call at Stevens our design spine. So every semester that you're an engineering student at Stevens, you're taking a design class, so eight design classes total. Very hands-on, project-based, collaborative curriculum. Again, the designs start off more general, working with a robot, building a suspension bridge, working with circuits, and these more general skills for engineers to have. And then once you transition to your more specialized coursework, the design projects become more specialized as well. The design spine culminates in the senior design project. Every student at Stevens, though, completes the senior design project, which is a year-long project you work on. It's essentially your capstone senior thesis experience. Um, and these are group projects as well that you work on with other students studying similar things to you, and sometimes even across disciplines based upon the skills that might be needed for the particular task or design at hand. There are lots of different places that you can study the programs that I just spoke about, um, with the exception of QF, as I mentioned, which is quite unique to Stevens. Um, but what sets our school apart? What really ultimately leads students to choose our school over other institutions where they might be able to study computer science or engineering? And in speaking with students and in knowing our school and the outcomes, it really is these opportunities for professional practice that draw our students to the institution. Being located in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is right across the river from New York City, really allows our students a lot of opportunity to gain work experience as undergraduates, to build their resume, to figure out what it is they like and don't like to do, and to then really hit the ground running post-graduation. Not a single Stevens student is required to have a professional opportunity as an undergraduate to graduate, although, over 90% of them do. And they fall into three broad categories. The first is research. About 20% of our students participate in research at Stevens. I already mentioned that senior design project that incorporates research. So you really can't get out of Stevens without doing some type of research. But about 20% of students will go beyond that. Typically starting, as I mentioned earlier, with a faculty member, working in their lab, on their projects, getting sort of the lay of the land um, of how that works at the college level. But then we do also have our own undergraduate student research fund that students can apply to to be able to pursue their own research projects. Again, you can keep working with faculty all the way through if you'd like, but there's opportunities to pursue your own projects as well. About 40% of our students participate in internships. Internships are those traditional six to eight week summer experiences that you can pursue between your academic years. And internships are not major specific. So any student at Stevens, regardless of what you're studying, can be a part of the internship program. Cooperative education, about 30% of our students pursue that. Co-op is major specific, so only engineering, math, science, and computer science students can participate in cooperative education. It's also a program that actually takes your time at Stevens to five years. You're doing the first year and the fifth year in the traditional way, taking full-time fall and spring semester classes, and then the three years in between, you're alternating every other semester between going to school full-time and working full-time. So you're still only paying for eight undergraduate semesters of coursework, still only completing eight undergraduate semesters of coursework. It just takes you a little bit longer to do it because you're stopping at least three times to work full time. So for example, one year, the fall semester might happen as it normally would. You're on campus, you're taking your courses. The spring semester, however, rather than taking your classes Monday through Friday for those three to four month period of time, during that time, Monday through Friday, nine to five, you're going to work for a company and you're earning money, you're gaining experience. Students are earning on average about 10 to $15,000 per co-op experience. Internship experiences are paid as well. 
whether you want to do research, cooperative education, internships, not something you need to decide right now, just important for you to know that we have those opportunities. Every Stevens student is assigned a career advisor from the start so they can begin speaking with that individual about what their long-term goals are and what might be best for them to pursue at Stevens in order to achieve them. You'll also see up there that about 10% of our students do study abroad. So there is a bit of a myth that engineering students, STEM students, math science, computer science can't study away. It's too hard to do that. Um, at Stevens, we do have affiliations with universities around the world that our students can study away at and take the courses they need to continue on with their sequence and transfer back with them to Stevens. And about 10% of our students do participate in that opportunity. Well, you should definitely be asking every school you're looking at, you know, what will the next four years of my life look like if I go there? Or five, in our case, if you do cooperative education or pursue an accelerated bachelor's, master's program. But you should also be asking in that school, and then what? What happens to your graduates? What happens to the students who come to your school, earn your degree, and then go out into the real world? And Stevens students do very well for themselves. 96% of our students were either employed or enrolled in graduate school full time six months after graduation with an average starting salary of just over $76,000 a year. Our students hit the ground running. We're 11th for career placement. They continue to see that growth in their um, careers. We're 13th in the nation for mid-career salaries and 17th for return on investment. I mentioned earlier that about a thousand companies do come to our campus to recruit students. So they're actively coming um, to, to meet with our students. They are attending our career fairs. They're interviewing them. Having, again, that location is really key um, for that ability for companies to interact with our students and to form those relationships with our career center. It's not all schoolwork and, and work and, and uh, professional experiences. Um, students have fun at Stevens as well. Um, we have over 100 student clubs and organizations on campus that you can choose from. Division three athletics, if you wanna participate in that level, club and intramural sports as well. 20 different performing arts groups on campus. I put over 50 performances on each year. Um, lots of community service, over 15,000 hours done by our students last year. We have Greek life, so fraternities and sororities, if that's of interest to you. There's really a lot happening on campus, which is supplemented by what's happening in the city of Hoboken, and then again, New York City right across the way. At the beginning of each semester, we have an activities fair where you can walk around to the different student clubs and organizations, see which ones might be of interest to you, sign up for their mailing list, and begin to attend meetings and get involved in that way. Housing is guaranteed all four years at Stevens. It's guaranteed, but it's not required, and it looks a little different depending on your class year. So for example, if you're a freshman and you wanna be a resident of the institution, and over 90% of our freshmen do live on campus, you're living in one of our seven residence halls. Sophomore, junior, and senior year, if you wanna be a resident of the institution, Stevens actually leases apartments in the city of Hoboken on your behalf. So you're still considered a resident of the institution because you're getting your housing through the school. However, we've leased apartments for you. Students like the increased level of independence that comes with an apartment. The apartments are also for full calendar years as opposed to the academic year. So if you wanted to stay over the summer in your apartment to take courses, pursue research, have your internship in the city, you can very easily do that. You can also stay in the same place year over year. So if you like where you're living, you can stay. Starting in fall 2022, though, we will be opening up a brand new uh, building, which I'll speak about on the next slide to give you an update on, on how, what housing will look like then. Being in Hoboken, we are just a mile by a mile, so it is a very small city. So no matter where you're living in the apartments, you can easily walk from them to campus. We do though also have shuttles that run around the city too, bringing students back and forth to campus. We have dining facilities on campus, everything from a grab and go, a made to order, the more traditional, um, dining options where you it's all you can eat. Um, we do also have relationships with different restaurants in Hoboken that accept our dining dollars and our meal plans. So students can also eat on Washington Street, which is the main street in Hoboken using their own, um, using their meal plan. I mentioned the new Student Housing and University Center. You can see an image of that here. In fall 2022, we are slated to open up this um, new space. The first four floors will be more student life space. So student lounges, um, another athletic facility, another dining facility, and the two towers will be residential space. So a thousand more students will be able to stay on campus. So as I mentioned now, just freshmen um, are guaranteed that on-campus housing. Guaranteed housing beyond that is in leased apartments in Hoboken. 
once the new towers open, we'll be able to keep more of our students on campus in that traditional residential life experience. And then the remaining students will still choose to be um, in the uh, lease departments in Hoboken. Again, fall 2022, that's slated to open. And that is on time. Last year, we also opened up a student wellness center at Stevens, so a new space for our student health services, student counseling, disability services as well for our students to have um, easy access to and to get the services that they need across those various areas. And I also already mentioned the opening of the Gateway Academic Center. So in fall 2019, 11 new classrooms, new faculty offices, teaching spaces, and labs for some of those areas of study like computer science, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and healthcare innovation. So definitely lots happening on campus. This physical growth on our campus is accommodating that student growth that I spoke about earlier. We're becoming a bit larger as an institution, so we want to make sure that we have the appropriate space for students to live and learn to make sure that it still feels like that smaller, close-knit community that they always had here at Stevens. Moving on to the application requirements, so the nuts and bolts of that experience. I'll talk through that and a bit about financial aid as well, and then I'll turn to your questions. The first thing to know about Stevens is that we use the common application. This is good news because many schools use the common application. So you can just add us to the list of institutions that might already be taking this form. Stevens though does also have our own application called the custom application. So if you see some information about that out there as well, totally fine. It's entirely up to you what you'd like to submit. We don't have any preference as to whether you submit the common application or the custom application. The deadlines are the same. The uh, material requirements are the same. The considerations for admission as as well as merit-based aid, all the same. It's just up to you. Just choose one and submit that one. There are many pieces to your application and we do conduct a holistic review, meaning we look at all of them, but certainly a very important piece to your application is going to be that official transcript. So your high school transcript, what you've done the past three years and what you're continuing to do in your senior year. And what I want to emphasize here is that we're looking at your transcript in combination with a document known as a school profile or a school report. So this document gives us specific information about your high school. What sorts of classes are offered here? What's considered rigorous at that place? What's the grading scale? As you may know, high schools vary sometimes greatly between one another. So it's really important for us to be evaluating you within your context, within your environment. What opportunities have you had available to you previously? How have you taken advantage of those opportunities? And how have you performed? The average GPA for an admitted student last year was a 3.8, but think about it as A's and B's. You're running A's and B's in your classes at Stevens. Also, I'll talk about it a bit now, but I also do recommend you go onto our website and check out our recommended coursework section under the how to apply page because at Stevens we're looking closely at all your classes but as you can imagine particularly at those math and science courses so for programs like engineering math science computer science cybersecurity have you taken courses like bio chem physics calculus by the time you graduate high school you can be missing one of those classes and still be offered admission to Stevens we will just admit you with what's known as a condition and ask that you take the course the summer before you enroll just to be sure everyone is on the same page as possible on a same page as possible starting their first semester so they can be successful in the curriculum we also do ask for certain math and science courses for our business programs and our humanities programs because as I mentioned math and science is a part of all the programs at Stevens however they're not as great as those that we ask of the engineering math science and computer science so definitely do check those out and again it's all just really in line with the curriculum you'll begin in once you start as a Stevens student we require two letters of recommendation at Stevens one from a counselor and one from a teacher the teacher recommendation, there are no guidelines or restrictions there. It can be any academic subject area. It can be any grade level, just whomever you'd like to write on your behalf. And the counselor letter does come along with that school report I mentioned a moment ago. Stevens is test optional for fall 2021. So for current seniors, if you're applying to Stevens this year, you have the option to submit SAT or ACT scores. There are some exceptions to this. We do have an accelerated pre-medicine program at Stevens, as well as an accelerated pre-law program. Those do still require SAT or ACT scores. Additionally, students who may be homeschooled or who attend schools who do not have grades, they do still need to submit testing as well. So there are some exceptions, but for the most part, students have the option to be test optional. So to choose whether or not they'd like to submit their test scores for fall 2021. This is currently a one-year policy, so if there are junior, sophomores, freshmen uh, on this webinar as well. Please do be sure to continue to check for updates on this to see if we've extended the test optional policy or if we've moved back to requiring the SAT or the ACT. And this will again always be posted on our website. 
With regard to the essay, the only one that Stevens requires is the one that is already a part of your common application, and that would also be a part of your custom application. That common app essay, that personal statement, that's the only one we need. We as an institution do not have any additional short answer essay or supplemental questions. Stevens is a school with early decision and regular decision guidelines, deadlines. Early decision is the binding agreement. If you apply early decision to Stevens, you are telling us, if I'm admitted, I will come. You are my number one choice school. This is where I want to be. At Stevens, we have early decision one and early decision two. There's no difference in terms of the binding aspect. It's really just when you apply by and when you find out by. Early decision one deadline is November 15th. You find out by December 15th. Early decision two deadline is um, January 15th, you find out by February 15th. You can see up there the dates by which you'd want to take your testing if you wanted to submit them and the dates by which you would deposit. We of course also have regular decision at Stevens. Regular decision is a non-binding agreement. You can apply to as many schools regular decision as you want. You're not making a commitment to any one particular place at that time. Um, you find out all your decisions at about the same time too, so you can kind of compare your offers of admission and decide where you'd like to go from there. Most students do end up applying regular decision to Stevens. That deadline is also January 15th, but you find out by April 1. You'll see the note at the bottom for our accelerated pre-medicine program. Those are regular decision applications, but they're due by November 15th, just because there is a more extended review process, so we do need a little additional time there. I already spoke about some of this on other slides, but at Stevens for the incoming class the year prior, it was a 40% acceptance rate to the institution, that average GPA that I mentioned of a 3.8, and taking the courses that we're recommending, as well as challenging yourself, right? Taking some higher level classes um, within your high school, particularly or usually in areas of interest that you want to pursue. I mentioned the clubs and organizations that we have on campus, we need students to take part in them. So we wanna see what you've done at the high school level. What have you been involved in when you're not studying or in your classes? And expand your mind about what that means. It's not just school clubs and organizations or athletics or the arts, it is all of those things, but you also have part-time work experience that you might want to know. Do you have family responsibilities at home that you have to take care of? We really wanna know everything that you're doing that's productive outside of the classroom. I mentioned that for fall 2021, we are test optional. But for the previous year, our middle 50% for the SAT was a 1340 to a 1500, ACT 30 to 33. These GPA and test scores that you see are not cutoffs, they are just averages or middle 50%. We do review every single application for admission to Stevens. In terms of cost of attendance, tuition at Stevens is just about $56,000 a year. It's an additional $16,000 for room and board. If you are commuting to campus, that room and board um, would of course not be a part of the overall cost of attendance. And even though, as I mentioned, housing is guaranteed, you do have the option to, to commute. You're automatically considered for merit-based aid just by applying for admission to Stevens. Your application for admission also serves as your merit-based scholarship application. The one exception to that is if you participate in FIRST Robotics. FIRST Robotics does have its own uh, scholarship application, merit scholarship application, that you can find by going to our scholarships page on our website. If you want to be considered for need-based aid, there are two extra things you have to do. You have to submit the FAFSA, which is a government form, and you have to submit the CSS profile, which is a form made available through College Board. When you submit the FAFSA and the CSS profile will depend upon when you decide to apply for admission. Because at Stevens, when you're offered admission to the institution, you also receive your financial aid award. So we need to have this information prior to that for you. So for example, if you're applying early decision one to Stevens, you're gonna submit your application by November 15th. You're gonna submit the CSS profile and the FAFSA by December 1, so that if you're offered admission by December 15th, we have that information. For regular decision, for example, you apply by January 15th, submit the FAFSA and CSS profile by February 15th, so that again, by April 1, you have that information. We have that information to provide you with um, information on whether or not you've qualified for need-based aid. Again, merit automatically considered, need-based, fill out the FAFSA and the CSS profile for that determination. The FAFSA and the CSS profile become available October 1 of the year in which you are applying. A financial aid package can be made up of different things. It can be made of scholarships. It can be made up of grants. Those are the two that you do not have to pay back. It can also have work-study opportunities or loan options as well. The best way for any student to find out at this point in time what a package might look like for them as a Stevens student is to utilize our net price calculator. The net price calculator is something you can just search once you're on our website and it'll take you to the page that allows you to enter in your own personal information to again get a sense of what financial aid could look like for you at Stevens. 
over 90% of students receive financial assistance from the institution. For those on the call who are junior, senior, or freshmen, we, I do just want to also mention that we do have a pre-college program. So we do run programs over the summer for current high school students to learn more about the academic programs that we offer at Stevens and to learn more about what it's like to be a Stevens student. Um, traditionally, they take place in person. Last year, we did offer them online as well. So we are preparing for both of those options for the upcoming summer um, as well, given we'll see where we are at um, and what we are able to do. The, um, the website posts the programs that are, are offered, and in December, the application goes live for you to apply to, and then you begin to find out February, March, um, whether or not you've been accepted to the program, and can then determine from there if you would like to join us. So definitely a good opportunity for you if you want to learn a little bit more about the different fields that we offer at Stevens, learn from our faculty members, interact with our current students um, as well, and really get a sense of, of different aspects of the college experience that may or may not be a good fit for you. Okay, at this time, I'm going to go into the Q&A and start looking at the questions and answer them there. So if you have any, um, please feel free to enter them in there and I'll just answer them out loud so you can all get the response. So one of the questions was how easy or difficult is it to change majors if they are within different departments? So what I will say is it's not as if you have to apply again. So once you're a student at Stevens, if you want to change your major, you're not applying again. It really is working with your academic advisor, completing a form, um, what your new study plan is um, to, to move forward. You do have two years to officially declare. So there is enough room built into your curriculum to change your mind within that time. However, the difficulty ease will depend a bit on what you're transitioning to, right? If you're moving from a chemical engineer to a mechanical engineer, there's not going to be as much challenge there because as I mentioned, you're all taking the same course as the first three semesters anyway. If you're moving from perhaps business to engineering, you might just have to double up in some of those design classes because you do have to complete eight of them. So, so long as you're changing your mind within those first two years, you're going to be able to, to make the change. What percentage of students are from New Jersey? The students tend to go home on the weekends. So about 50% of our students are from New Jersey. We are a private institution, so we're not a public institution, but about half of our students do come from our state. As I mentioned, over 90% of students do live on campus though, so it definitely is not a school in which most students are commuting or they're leaving um, on the weekends. Once a student comes to campus and sees all that there is to offer on our campus in Hoboken and New York City, um, it'd be pretty difficult to find more exciting things happening where they're from, so they often do stay with their new friends on campus. They're either socializing or working on their academics, so it's definitely a place that students live on campus and stay over the weekends, even though most of our students do come from the state. And as you know, too, you could live three hours away and still be in New Jersey, so it's not as easy to get home for some versus others. May you have a major and minor in different schools? Yes. You can certainly be an engineering major and minor in the school of business have a computer science major and minor in engineering. You can definitely major, and same with double majors if you wanted to do that. You can definitely double major and minor across the different schools. Is there Greek life? Yes, there is Greek life. I mentioned we do have fraternities and sororities on campus. Um, you're not allowed to participate though uh, until after your first semester, so you have some time to get settled into Stevens more generally. Uh, about 30% of our students do participate. Question about AP credits, do we recognize them? Yes, Stevens does award credit for AP exams, IB exams, as well as college courses you may have previously taken while in high school. The AP and IB exams that we give credit for, that's listed plain as day, clear as day to see on our website. If you were to go to the undergraduate admissions page and click on the accepted students tab, you would see uh, more information about learning which AP exam scores are the equivalent of which class for how many credits. Um, and the accepted students page is open to everyone. It's not special. You don't need to log in to get, to get there. College credit though is a little bit, um, it's more individualized. So if you are currently taking college classes, you will um, have to send us your college transcript, a copy of your course syllabi and complete a college credit evaluation form. And then those are looked at individually by our faculty members to determine if there is an equivalent at Stevens. And that process of um, applying AP credit, IB credit, college courses takes place after a student is admitted and decides to enroll the summer between high school completion and their start at Stevens. A student asked about um, 
the Zoom recording. Yes, so we are recording the session and it will be posted. Um, I believe at the end we'll remind you again where it is that you can find that. We can just go back to um, the site and we are posting my session. All other sessions are posted too. So if there were lots of schools you wanted to learn more about or there's even different topics, right? One of my colleagues did a presentation on women in STEM. So you can even maybe, maybe not a school specific, but a more general session. You can definitely check those out. They're all recorded um, and will be listed. Do you require subject tests? We do not require subject tests for our areas of study. The one exception to that is the accelerated pre-medicine program that does require two subject tests, a math and a science. Um, however, this year we have, while we still require the SAT or ACT for the accelerated pre-medicine, we are not requiring subject tests. Again, given the difficulty, but in general, no, we do not require SAT subject tests. What's my favorite part about Stevens? I like that question, thank you. What I really like about Stevens is just the excitement around what our students are doing. It's very cool to be at a school where students are super entrepreneurial, very innovative, very collaborative, and are really just trying to figure out ways to make our lives easier, right, in their fields, whether it be computer science or engineering, business. They're really trying to figure out ways in which they can use technology to improve our day-to-day -day life. And it's really exciting to be around those types of students. It's really exciting to read applications for students that are interested in doing that and then getting them to come here and see, then put that, those thoughts or those dreams or those passions into, into action is something that I really do, I really do like seeing in my role in admissions. Uh, when is early action? Is there interior design? So Stevens doesn't have early action. We just have early decisions. So we only have the binding agreement. So important to remember that. We do not have an interior design program specifically. Um, the closest you would get is the visual arts and technology program, which does have a design element to it, but it's certainly, it's not an interior design major. So I don't wanna um, emphasize that it is in that regard. That's just our closest one to a design program. What kind of merit scholarships are available? So as I mentioned, you're automatically considered for them just by applying for admission to Stevens. We actually do list all of our scholarships on our website as well. Um, so perhaps you'd be awarded a presidential scholarship or a Stevens scholarship. We have a Clark scholarship, a New Power scholarship. So they all have different names um, uh, some, and different requirements to um, maintain them once you're at Stevens. You can certainly check out the website for those more specifics. If you are offered admission to Stevens and do receive uh, your decision letter and your financial aid award. It will list out which scholarships specifically you have received at the institution. Research and internships that are available. So the research that's immediately available is what our faculty members are pursuing. So there are lots of different levels that you can take in, in research in colleges. And one of them, if you want to take a deeper dive, is look at the faculty members in the department. What are they doing? What is their research emphasizing? And then that's a really good way to see right off the bat what you could help with. Um, Student-led research, though, would be what you decide to do. So you would apply for your own research grants based on your interests uh, to try to get funding that way. Internships, there are so many of them available across all different fields. As I mentioned, hundreds of companies come to campus each year. Thousands recruit our students. Um, so lots and lots of opportunity there. Um, one good resource that you might want to check out as well on our website is something called the Career Outcomes Report. So if you just go to stevens.edu and type in Career Outcomes, it will show you what our most recent class did um, post-graduation and the particular fields that they went into. Is the CSS profile required in addition to the FAFSA and what is the difference? Um, yes, both are required to be considered for need-based aid. One, the FAFSA is a government form. The CSS profile is a form made available through College Board. The CSS profile is a more extensive um, question about your need-based aid. Off the top of your head, what opportunities, jobs, humanities, and art school graduates have? The list of employers were heavy for business and science graduates. Off the top of my head, what I will say a lot of our students go into within the College of Arts and Letters, particularly because I mentioned that music and technology and visual arts and technology are our most popular areas, are more of that media space, right? So we have students going to work for Scholastic, for example, so to work for, to work for the book company or going more into um, like working for record labels, right? They might end up working there uh, as well. So more things within more of the media entertainment field, I would say a lot of our students in the humanities and arts go to, but also like, for example, if they pursue science communication, that's more science writing program. So perhaps they go to work for National Geographic in that case. 
Does the college level class have to be related to the major I want to pursue in order for the credits to count? Nope. So as a student at Stevens, you're going to have major requirements, but you're also going to have humanities electives you need to take, elective coursework you just have where you can take anything across different areas of study. So it can be applied to, to courses outside of your major requirements. So it definitely does not have to be um, related in order to count. Is it possible to only fill out the FAFSA to get financial aid? So we do ask at Stevens that you complete both the FAFSA and the CSS profile to be considered for need-based aid at the institution. And then can I major in more than one thing? Yes, you can double major. Um, double majors are allowed at Stevens. I will say though, more frequently students are pursuing majors and minors um, or going forward with that accelerated bachelor's master's degree option I mentioned. So rather than getting two bachelor's degrees in their time at Stevens in just one more year, so in five years, they can leave with a bachelor's and a master's degree. So sometimes they find that to be um, more appealing. I will also say you're not navigating this choice on your own. I mentioned the career advisor you get, but you also get a faculty advisor, an academic advisor, and a peer leader within your area of study. So there's lots of folks at Stevens um, available to help you navigate the choice and really ultimately always thinking of what's the end goal? What do you want to do when you leave Stevens and how can we best craft your experience to help you get there? Any other questions? I did answer all the ones that came through, but I do want to make sure you have a moment to type in any extras if you'd like. Great. Well, I'll turn it over in just one moment, but I just want to thank you all again so much for joining me this evening. I really do appreciate you taking the time to be here with me virtually. I do want to remind you that we have lots of virtual options to learn more about Stevens online um, beyond today. So you can certainly feel free to visit our campus visit portal to learn more about those opportunities. Um, if you are currently a senior, remember that you can also interview as a part of your application process if you'd like. It is not a required piece to the application process, but we do allow you to do it. Stevens has also opened for in-person, outdoor-only tours for students uh, who are seniors, who are from states that New Jersey allows to travel, which of course you would fall into that category since you're already here. So again, things are, Things are changing, things are still fluid, but definitely do ch check our website for the most up-to-date information about opportunities to learn more about us during these times. And feel free to reach out to me at any point in time with any questions you have, please don't hesitate to reach out. Well, thank you, Megan. That thank was you. terrific. Um, once again, we wanna thank everyone for being here today. Just a few couple announcements. Uh, when you go to close the window for the session today, you will get a, a link that pops up. It's a quick survey for questions. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Uh, again, this is just one of many sessions hosted through NJ ACAC, so please feel free to go ahead and sign up for other sessions on the njacac.org slash virtual fair website. And the session will be posted. I know someone asked about that. The recording will be posted. They said within a week. Um, that you should find it on the same website, njacac.org slash virtual fair. So that is it, everybody. Um, thank you again for being with us today, and uh, everyone have a great night. Thank you. Be well. Bye. Bye. -bye.